season's greetings to all of you from CBS Sports. This game so vital to both the Patriots and the Jets. We welcome you to Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. New England and New York meeting for the second time this season. Patriots won the first one 13-7 up in Foxborough. The Steelers today have already locked up the one seed in the playoffs. While the Patriots, with a win today, can take the number two seed and get a first round bye. Jets playing for a playoff spot. Hello, friends. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims and Bonnie Bernstein. And you look at the Jets. They're coming in off a big performance last week against Seattle, and especially for quarterback Chad Pennington. Yeah, Chad Pennington played awfully well last week against the Seattle Seahawks. It answered a lot of questions that fans, the media, the critics had of him. Was he over the shoulder injury? And they came out, they were wide open, they threw the football. Down the field, Chad Pennington played extremely well. Look at that. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. And, Jim, we talked to him. That's what he wants to do again today. Be wide open, be versatile, and challenge this New England defense. Meanwhile, on Monday night, the shocker. Miami coming in from behind late to upset the New England Patriots. And Tom Brady, we talked to him this week. This one was a hard one to shake off. Yeah, Tom Brady, those four interceptions, he was still mad about what went on during that game. But forget about last week. He's having an outstanding year. Look at the number of yards, over 3,000. 24 touchdown passes. That is really good because... They have changed their style of offense. Going to the Pro Bowl, now it's more about Corey Dillon managing the offense, and Tom Brady's doing it great. All right, Phil, before we kick this one, we've got a quick update. Let's send it over to Greg in the studio. All right, Jim, history in Indianapolis. With 56 seconds to play, Peyton Manning, 21 yards to Brandon Stokely to pull the Colts to within two. The two-point conversion is good to tie the game, and Peyton Manning is now the all-time NFL record holder for touchdown passes in a season with 49. The game is tied at 31 with 56 seconds to play, guys. Wow, thank you, Greg. What a comeback for the Colts in that one. They got a kick return by Dominique Rhodes just when they were a couple of touchdowns behind. And now Peyton in the last minute brings him back, gets his mark, and the two-point try. And that's a very important game for the New England Patriots who are hoping, that, in fact, that the Colts will win today. They say they're rooting for the Colts for once. Yeah, that's kind of hard for them to do. We saw Bob Kraft, Jim, before the game because if the Colts win, well, that really helps this New England Patriots team out. We'll get to all these playoff scenarios throughout the day as the Patriots kick it away to Cotchery of the Jets. And Jericho is dropped at the 28-yard line. It's a busy week for Chad Pennington. Had a little spat with the local media here. That's behind him now. But free touchdown, no interception performance, sparkling performance against Seattle. Devin Mawai voted to the Pro Bowl this week for the sixth straight year. This is his 111th consecutive start at center for the Jets. And Curtis Martin, he's Pro Bowl bound as well. And what a season he's having coming into the week as the league's number one rusher. So the Jets started out from the 28-yard line with a 10-4 record on the season, one of their only losses back in October, 13-7 at Foxborough. Pennington, play action across the middle, and a lot of congestion in the area as he was trying to find Curtis Martin. Now the Patriots defense, we're talking about pro bowlers, you can add Richard Seymour to that list. Well deserved, manning that defensive line, and Mike Vrabel, one of the linebackers and great leader on this squad. In the secondary, Ty Law, he tried to go in warm-ups, he is in fact inactive. Rodney Harrison at strong safety. This patchwork secondary all season long for New England, and this play is whistle dead. Bernie Kukar is the referee. Ball start. 69 offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And big Herm Edwards looking for a playoff berth for the third time in four years. And that's significant. First time it will be done, Jim, by a Jets coach in the history of the franchise. So that tells you that things have uh, been positive since Herm Edwards has been the coach. Boy, well, have they ever. And the Jets, again, with a win today, earn a playoff berth. There's Curtis Martin back to the 27th, third and 11 coming up. He runs into Teddy Bruschi. And Bill Belichick, we met with him just a few hours ago, and 
For Coach Belichick, his team, he said it was a really physical battle down at Miami. He expects another one today. Light a week of contact. Contact. Hey, they go on the road. It's a Monday night game, division game. The Dolphins don't like them. They want to try to do something to make their season positive. It's physical. You go home, you come back down here to New York. So he had no choice. Had to get his players ready by really being physically taking it easy on them all week long. They look like they're ready to go. And they've got Troy Brown in. Has an extra defensive back on third and 11. Open across the middle. Martin has the first down. And he dives ahead near the midfield stripe. Eugene Wilson finally tackles him, but Pennington found his tailback wide open across the middle. Well, if you think all the injuries to this New England secondary has not changed the way they play football, then you're wrong because they are doing coverages they usually do not do when they're playing teams like the Jets. It's third and long. They would usually blitz the quarterback, make him throw it quick, make the tackle, and the Jets would be punting right now, but they're worried about their coverage down the field. So they don't rush the quarterback. They leave Curtis Martin wide open. First down for the Jets. They fake the toss. Now rolling left. Pennington dumps it to Soul. And Mike Grable stays with him all the way. Don Davis is back there also playing in the secondary. A back of linebacker who's seen a lot of action in the defensive backfield. He is right now in this opening defensive series. we got Bonnie Bernstein on the sidelines. Bonnie? Hi there, Jim. Well, Herm Edwards told his team the only way we're going to win this game is by scoring more points. Now, hang on before you say, thanks, no kidding. He said, really, it's more of a mentality thing. He said, when we get past the 50-yard line, we have to have the sense of urgency to score on every drive, not not just at the end of the game because New England's defense is banged up. The last time the Patriots lost two in a row was two years ago, Jim. All right, Bonnie. So they do find themselves residing in New England territory on the opening drive. And that will leave them about a yard shy of a first. Third down and one after Curtis Martin picks up three. Well, you know, Bonnie, what Bonnie says goes back to what Herman Edwards said after their Pittsburgh game, Jim. He says, we got to get out. And they asked him a bunch of questions about the offense. He just, we got to score more. Well, what about this? We got to score more. What about the quarterback? We need to score more. He didn't direct it at anybody, but it was a message to his quarterback, to Paul Hackett, his offensive coordinator. Let's take some chances. Let's get the football down the field and get some points. Pennington dives ahead for the first down at the 40. So the Jets putting together a nice little series to open the game. And this is notable that they're moving and threatening as the Patriots have not given up an opening drive touchdown since the opening game a season ago against Buffalo. That's 29 straight games. A key stat that always gets overlooked in football. We have so many opening drive points and the number of points you give up on opening drives. Get the game the scenarios in your favor it's amazing how it, it works out so much and, and creates a lot of wins because of that opening drive so first down pennington he is picked off no opening drive touchdown again as brewski's running back with it with a blocker moving ahead that's samuel helping clear the way baker wrestles him down at the 39 and the patriots come up with the big play chad pennington thinking about being Forceful as he looks for the receiver down the field. Nobody open deep. Teddy Bruschi makes an outstanding interception. Teddy Bruschi with his third interception of the season. And the New England defense makes the first big play of the game. Teddy Bruschi and the Patriots set up. Tom Brady and the offense at the Jets' 38-yard line. Corey Dillon, the single back, as the Patriots will open up here with a little Dillon run off the right side and bang right away for a one-yard pickup. We have another update. We're going to send it back to Greg in the studio in New York. All right, Jim and Phil, we showed you how the Colts have tied it up. Final seconds of regulation. Drew Brees trying to get something going for the Chargers. Overthrows his man, Rob Morris, with the interception. They go to overtime, and the Colts have won the overtime toss. We'll keep you updated. Let's send it back to you. All right, thank you, Greg. That is, again, so important, especially from the Patriots' end. As the Patriots now second down in nine. If San Diego won that game and the Patriots lost today to the Jets, that would move the Chargers into the two position in the AFC playoffs. And that pass short of Patton. Third and nine coming up. That well, let's interception, go back. Phil? Yeah, let's look at it. Here's Teddy Bruschi 
and you're going to watch Santana Moss come across the field. Anthony Beck go underneath him. You play quarterback, and you decide where to throw it. Chad Pennington, he tries to be aggressive. He throws it down the field, and what an interception by Teddy Bruschi. Watch Chad Pennington. Oh, Teddy Bruschi reading the eyes all the way. What a job from the linebacker position by Teddy Bruschi. Troy Brown is in on offense. Third down and nine for Brady. They're coming in on Brady. Gets it away in time and in and out of the hands of David Patton. There is a flag. Brian Thomas was right in on Brady as he released it. Let's see what Bernie Holy Kukar... 76 offense. That's when he has declined fourth down. So the Jets defense responds, forcing a three and out. Brian Thomas, number 99, he is the man that's held on the outside, but he has come in from John Abraham, and since he has been in, he has been just a tremendous surprise to the New York Jets, and he's played excellent. Rushing the passer, and he's held up very good against the run, too. Josh Miller to boot at midfield. Tries to angle it, and it bounces at the 11, picked up by McCarrens. And then he is blanketed at the 14. So the Jets will take over at the 14 after the 28-yard punt. Five-yard run back. Pennington's ready to give it a second go. And the Patriots offensive line. Meeting on the sideline as the Jets come out for their second possession, starting at the 14-yard line. Again, the Jets win today, and they're in the playoffs. 6-1 and one at home this year, only defeated by the Ravens in overtime. You can pass all the way again. Across the middle they go. Martin for five yards. Teddy Bruschi had an interception of a Chad Pennington pass when they met here last year, and he has one already today. Got an update, and the Colts have won it. In overtime on a Vander Jack field goal. So, if the Patriots win today, they will secure the number two seed and a first round bye in the postseason. Jim, we were watching Peyton Manning hit a big fourth down throw in that game to keep the Colts' hopes alive. It's Martin on second and five, and he's near the first down, very close, maybe just a bit shy. Harrison and Johnson. Trying to push him back. Well, you look at this Jets offense, Jim. You know, one thing, they, there are a couple of things they want to do. But they had so much success last week just, just throwing the ball down the field, being unpredictable. And we talked to Herm Edwards uh, earlier this week, a couple of days ago, and he wants to keep that going. Keep taking, not, I don't want to say taking chances. That's not the word. Just keep being aggressive. Keep the defense off balance. Third and less than a yard. And again, Pennington trying to sneak for the first. That worked successfully earlier, and I believe it has again. And they'll move the chains. You know, too, when you look at this game today, as the Jets get the first down, as you talk about Herm Edwards, uh, he kept preaching to his team all week long. All right, don't give these guys, meaning the New England Patriots, don't give them too much credit. Don't hold them in too high esteem. Look, they're good. They've won Super Bowls. Yes, we can't take that away from them. But don't talk about them like there's some team that we can't beat if we don't play well. First down for New York. And it's Martin running right into Brewski for a gain of a two. Hey, you know what? His own team to get intimidated before they even take second down and eight mid first quarter. No score at Giant Stadium. Delay give. Martin lost his footing and he's only out to the 30. Setting up third and five for the Jets. 
Now we've talked so much about this Jets offense, what they want to do, what they're trying to do. It's such a uh, conversation piece here in New York, the, the offense of Paul Hackett. When we, Jim, we, like you said, we had a chance to talk to Bill Belichick before the game. He goes, oh, you know, we know what this offense is about and what they're going to do, where they like to throw, and they're going to be the same offense we have seen uh, for the last few years since Paul Hackett has been with the Jets. And, Second and long, they expected a draw, they were there to stop. Third down and five. Swinging it over to Quebec, first down, 40, 45, and out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Bumped out by Rodney Harrison. Well, we talked about the differences in this defense, and you just saw one of the big ones. The blitz, when you do blitz an offense, here they come off the side. Wayne Corbett changes his route. He throws it short. Now the coverage is not the same because Ty Law's not there covering Wayne Corbett. The tackling's not the same. And again, the Jets pick up a big first down. The old reliable Wayne Corbett picks up 20 yards on that reception. First down at midfield. Back to Curtis Martin, this time a little room for about four. Martin has already, in this opening quarter, set a new Jet standard. He's broke, he's been able to break now his own mark for single season rushing, Curtis Martin. The 19 yards gives him 1,530 on the season. Personal mark, Jet team mark. And again, for the second time, the Jets in New England territory. This drive started back at their own 14. Second down and six. Fake to Martin, cross the middle and short of McCarrens. And Jarvis Green applying the pressure. We've got the update back to Greg in New York. All right, Jim and Phil, it is all over in Indy, and the Colts ride that momentum from Peyton Manning's record-setting performance. Mike Vanderjat, 30-yard field goal in overtime, wins it for the Colts. They come from 15 down twice to beat the Chargers, 34-31. Well, it looks like San Diego never had possession of the ball. We heard earlier from Greg they won the coin flip, took them two minutes, 45 seconds, driving down for that top of the 10th victory over the Chargers. So third down, third down and six. And it stays in the pocket, hits McCarrens at the 40, and the forward progress gives him the first. Roddy Harrison saying, wait a minute, we pushed him back. But they'll have uh, none of that first down Jets. Oh, what a good shot, Chad Pennington hanging in the pocket. Defenders all around him, and he makes a nice throw across the middle. McCarrens just outruns Asante Samuel across the field. Wait a minute. Rodney Harrison, he's a tough tackler, and he also can officiate the game. <laughs> Doesn't like the spot. First down, New York at the 40 of New England. Play action. Open his soul. And Brewski rides him down at the 33. Well, we had a chance to talk to Mike Vrabel this week, and it's one of the first thing out of his mouth. we got to get some pressure on this Chad Pennington. And early in this game, they are doing it. They're all around him. They're hitting him. Well, that was a tough hit there. A lot of pressure, and he still had the arm strength to get it down the field and then get that completion to Gerald Soule. We've got a Patriot player down. And it's another member of the secondary, Eugene Wilson. We'll take a timeout at Giant Stadium. Jets on the drive. Boy, the last position the Patriots can afford to lose anyone. Secondary. Eugene Wilson to the bench. Ty Law inactive again, dating back to the end of October, an injury he suffered in Pittsburgh. And Pennington on second and short, almost picked off by Don Davis, again, who's been playing free safety, even though he is really a backup linebacker, and this is uh, something he's had to step up and fill in for almost two solid months. Here he is, number 51. What the, they're doing, New England, this is about the third time I've seen them use this coverage. They're taking a safety on each side, and they are running outside and doubling the wide receivers. So they're putting the pressure on their linebackers to cover the tight end in the back, coming out of the backfield, taking some pressure off those corners, and double-teaming the wide receivers. Third down and three. The Jets have not missed on third down so far. 
far. They're five for five, but this one is going to end that streak as Willie McGinnis is able to meet head on Curtis Martin. Well, the Jets have so much success when it comes to running the football in third down situations. But remember who they're playing. They're playing the Patriots. They expect these runs where everybody else is caught off guard. They know what the Jets like to do on offense. Second and long, look for the draws, look for the screen passes. And third and five or less, be alert. They can run the football. Six and a half minute drive for the Jets comes up empty. And Toby Gowen is into punt. Troy Brown is the returner. He makes the fair catch at the gate. Kevin Falk is inactive today, so Brown returns to uh, what he used to star at. Punt returns. We'll see the Patriots backed up inside their own 10 when we come back. Well, you can log on to NFL.com and see the latest playoff picture. Get the official up-to-the-minute status of every team by logging on to NFL.com or NFL on AOL. Brady and the Patriots from the nine-yard line. Brady looking for David Gibbons, who's open at the 35 and falls ahead to the 38. Gibbons questionable all week, but he played Monday night after being questionable, and he's here again hauling in a 29-yarder. David he, Gibbons going against David Barrett, number 36, going down the field. Makes the good fake inside. Nice push off with the right arm, which is not caught. And Tom Brady gets the protection. It is a blitz by the Jets' defense. Stands in there. He does it very well. And the ball comes off good, too, Jim. We were talking about it. He did not warm up with throwing gloves on. He put them on, and I thought he struggled in the first series with the gloves. First down, it's Corey Dillon out to the 46. You mentioned David Barrett defending on that pass play. He hobbled off the field, and Terrell Buckley. About it all week. You read the papers in New York. We are going to do whatever it takes to stop Corey Dillon, and so far they have crowded the line of scrimmage trying to do that. Second and two, you saw Barrett on the sideline trying to stretch out. Ball is free, and Christian Fourier is in the right spot. The backup tied in. It looked like maybe Terrell Buckley knocked it loose. Again, Buckley coming in for David Barrett. And the Patriots will face third and about three. Well, I tell you what, when you talk about this Jets team, it, it, it just starts and almost ends with the front four. They have done such an outstanding job this year. Sean Ellis is all over it. Getting up in there, just causing confusion with the blocking. And then the rest of Jets' defense, it's much faster. They react. They get there and cause the fumble. Barrett is back on the field. Buckley also, as they also bring in reinforcement with John McGraw in the secondary. Third down and three. They come in on Brady and drop him at the 39-yard line. That's Jonathan Vilma, the rookie from Miami. Now there's no doubt what the Jets want to do on defense. Jonathan Vilma on the outside. Nobody sees him. Nobody blocks him. They want to pressure Tom Brady, and they've done it so far early in this game. Second sack of his rookie campaign for Jonathan Vilma, who has been a very solid contributor for Donnie Henderson's defense, and Miller boots it away. McCarron's makes the catch, 25, straight ahead. McCarron gets the double whammy at the 35. 37-yard punt, 11-yard run back. Jets defense celebrates as it holds New England again. Hello, I'm Herm Edwards, and along with my wife Leah and our son Marcus, we'd like to wish everyone a very happy, happy holiday, holiday season, season and, and a blessed New, new Year. year. Now, thank you to the Edwards family and Herman's team now. And first down, run straight ahead with Curtis Martin. You saw his son, Marcus, who's a football player at San Diego State. Like his dad. Yep. Good athlete, good looking, too. Herm in his fourth year. You look back on what he's done, the great success he's had. First year, division title. Second year, postseason again as a wild card berth. Last year, of course, was the season that was... Uh, um, Disappointment from the start with the injury to Pennington. They went six and ten, but they're out of that hole as they talked about all season. Got to get out of that black hole, is what he called it. And here they are fighting for a playoff berth today. Second down and five. Pennington looking for the long ball. McCarrens is the target, and it's out of bounds. 
Well, this week, David Letterman. You can celebrate the holidays with Dave and the Late Show. Monday, don't miss the one and only Howard Stern. And later this week, Dave's got Pittsburgh Steeler Ben Roethlisberger. That's coming up on the Late Show with David Letterman. One other note about the Jets now as you try to piece all this together. All the information coming in on these 1 o'clock games finishing up. San Diego is now assured the four seed in the playoffs. If the Jets win today, they would be assured of the five, which means regardless of what happens next week, the Jets, if they win here, would be at San Diego on the wild card weekend. That's a, that's a really interesting and I think it's going to be an exciting matchup if it does happen. Final minute of the first quarter and Pennington looking for Santana Moss and it's out of bounds and they'll bring back out Toby Gowen. Eugene Wilson was back on the field. He had a little ankle sprain. They retaped it and he was out defending on that play. You know, yes. I, I, I tell you, not to interrupt you, Jim, but you talk about the Jets, what Herm Edwards has done. I think the Jets at 10-4 and four are one of the bi one of the good surprises in the NFL. I didn't expect them to be a really solid team. Not many people did, and here they are. And, and not only when they, they're 10 and 4, when they lose, they always have a chance to win those games. They had a chance to win those games, too. Bowen's punt. Now that one, such a heavy ball today in this cold air. And it's going out past the 30. They'll mark it at the 31. Now, we mentioned Jets San Diego is a possibility. It will happen, in fact, if the Jets win today. They did meet in week two out there. And the uh, Jets defeated them 34-28. That's, uh, again, one of the many possibilities today. Scoreless with five seconds to go first quarter. One more play in the first quarter as the Patriots have it for the third time. This series begins at the 31. And the Jets have four defensive linemen down in there and four linebackers expecting one. And they went right into Jonathan Vilma. That was Corey Dillon with the run again. They're without John Abraham today for the third straight game out with that knee injury. And that's the end of a scoreless first quarter. You're watching the NFL on CBS. <laughs> You're longer off the tee? Whoa! Freddie Couples says Sims longer off the tee. Well, Freddie Couples knows what he's talking about. And yes, uh, all right. To look into that. Here's Brady on the first play of the second quarter. And out to the 50-yard line with Christian Fourier, Victor Hobson defending. I tell you, there's a lot about when you watch this game today, the Jets are almost just, they're, they're playing defense and they're saying, all right, Tom Brady, you're, you've won two Super Bowls, you're two MVPs, you, everybody thinks you're great, and you are a heck of a quarterback, no doubt. But they're daring him to come out and win this football game. You can tell they have geared everything to stop Corey Dillon running the football. We go from the gun, first down at the 49. And they go Corey Dillon. Takes it to the other 49-yard line, a two-yard gain. Corey Dillon, what an acquisition for a second-round pick back in the spring. Fourth in the league in rushing coming into the weekend. Did not make the Pro Bowl. Did not make it for the AFC. But then again, I don't know who you can say you're going to knock off. Nobody. Competition is just too great in the AFC. Tomlinson made it. Edger and James. But you think about Corey Dillon, Jim. He just think of what he's done for this team. Oh, he's been everything. Curtis Martin. Uh, as uh, they talk about these Pro Bowlers, look at the Dillon effect here. The loss at Pittsburgh. Of course, Corey did not play that game. He was out with a with a thigh injury that game. Well, look at the difference. What they've done in rushing yards per game, average per rush, touchdowns rushing, and you can't even. We can't even quantify what he has done for the New England defense. It's all beat up. The secondary's hurt. Running the football, controlling the clock, doing all those things has, has helped the team out. And you can't give a stat to Corey Dillon for that. Third down and three. Take to Dillon. Brady, he can run for it. He has it with ease and slides to the 38. That's a good job by Tom Brady. The Jets 
only four people rushing the quarterback. They don't even talk about during the week. Well, I guarantee the Jets don't go, all right, let's keep him in the pocket and contain him. So you take all your extra defenders who could be there normally and you run them to double-team wide receivers down the field. That's why Tom Brady had nobody in front of him, and he ran for a first down real easily. And the Jets, 38. Fake left or right. Over to Patrick Pass. It's inside the 30. And finally banged out by Donnie Abraham. There is a flag at the 31-yard line, and the Jets are already indicating it's going against New England. Take away a 17-yard gain. 61 offense. We'll assess the penalty from the spot of the ball. 10 yards. Still first down. Called on Stephen Neal. Bill Belichick back in familiar surroundings, longtime coordinator here at this stadium. Yeah, that's right. We met him in one of his old defensive rooms this morning in the giant locker room, actually. And it was kind of funny. He kept looking around, checking it out, didn't he? Going, yeah. hey, yeah, it looks, yeah, I remember this place. It looks a little different, but not a lot. There's only so much you can do with, uh, with those meeting rooms. So it's first and 14. And again, they fake the Dylan. Pressure. Gets it away over to Dillon. And Dillon tries to make a move, but he'll only get to the 38. They do give him the extra two yards. Hit first by Eric Barton. Dillon came into this game needing only six yards to break his own personal best for rushing in a season. He's already eclipsed that in this game, and he needed 58 yards rushing today to break Curtis Martin's Patriot single-season team record. Well, you talked about it already, too, Jim. What he has done for this football team, and it takes it, it takes a little giving from everybody, too. Corey Dillon's success has actually taken some of the um, praise and offense away from Tom Brady. Going back to Corey, and goes back middle of the field. Look at him weaving down to the 30. He's about two yards shy of the first. Third and we'll call it two from the Jets' 30. Really thought the official blue so we're going to stop play on the field, but I don't see anybody down. Yeah, they signaled the timeout on the field, but that's uh, gone away now. And some reinforcement into the Patriot lineup with Jed Weaver with a third tight end. Joining Daniel Graham. I think the Patriots in the situation right here that you go for it on you run this on third down because there's a little wind in the face you actually probably would go for it on fourth down too. Patrick Pass is the single back. But along with Patrick Pass, big hole on the left side and he's able to get to the 25 yard line. Stephen Neal and Daniel Graham really open up the left side. Yeah, excellent play call by Charlie Weiss and the New England Patriots. The blocking up front. It's the left side of the offensive line. Look at them just push it down inside. Stephen Neal pulls around, gets a good block, and Patrick Pass catching the Jet defense thinking pass. They get to the outside. Here's Charlie Weiss, Notre Dame bound as soon as the season ends. He's the head coach at his alma mater where he never played football but graduated back in 1978. The 25-yard line. Play action. Fake to pass and the intended target, David Patton. How hard do you think it is for Charlie Weiss to juggle two jobs here as you approach the postseason and he also got the recruiting season going on with college football signing date in February. Well, he's got a lot going on. First off, we talked to Bill Belichick a little bit about today, and he goes, look, we were up by 11 points last week. It's not Charlie Weiss going to Notre Dame was not the reason why we lost, but he goes, it's only an inconvenience to Charlie Weiss because nobody else is going, so it's hard work for him, no doubt, Jim, but so far I think he's handled well because... The Patriots offense the last two weeks, they've moved the ball very well, and they've scored quite a few points, too. Nice piece of running by Patrick Pass. It looked like it would be just a midget game, but he brushed off 
David Barrett leg is a piece of lint and picks up, in fact, enough yardage for another first down. Oh, look at the blocking up front. Christian Fourier, number 88, gets the outside. And anytime Patrick Pass comes to the game, you're playing defense for the Jets. You go, it's got to be a pass. They got the pass receiving running back in. And the Patriots crossing them up and running the football. Corey Dillon returns to the lineup as the Patriots are putting together one fine drive. First down at the 15, and Dillon uh, this time stopped for only a yard. Wayne Robertson, Trevor Johnson. Trevor Johnson, a rookie out of Nebraska, has seen a lot of uh, action this season, drafted in the seventh round. There he is. And again, this uh, Jets defensive line so solid, but, you know, John Abraham has been out three straight games. Brian Thomas has had to step up. They've got Jason Ferguson, who's often overlooked. Dwayne Robertson stepping it up in his second year. And here's the defensive coordinator talking about stepping it up. Your best player goes down, and the defense, the quality did not. They had still played and produce very well. From the 14, they run in after Brady, gets it away, Patrick pass, and the Jets hit him and move him forward to the 10. Jonathan Vilma was coming in hard on Brady. The blitz, Jonathan Vilma right up the middle. Tom Brady sees it, able to react, knows where his outlet receiver is and gets it off just before he sacked. This crowd is really into it today. Boy Brown in as an extra receiver in a slot to the right. Brady faces third and five from the Jets' 10-yard line. Brady, pass incomplete. Right at the first down yardage, he was trying to hook up with Dion Branch. Instead, we'll see Adam Vinatieri. Well, these two teams played a scoreless second half in Foxborough back in October. A scoreless first quarter today. So we've gone three and a half quarters of action between these two with no scoring. I was expecting a wide open game. It is wide open. They're both doing whatever they think they've got to do to get it down the field and make it happen. The defense is just playing well. Adam Vinatieri, Pro Bowl kicker for the AFC, is good again from 28 yards. He has missed only once this entire season. First points of the game to the Patriots. Happy holidays to all of you. Jim Nance, Phil Sims, Bonnie Bernstein as the Patriots take the lead on an Adam Vinatieri field goal. He's 29 of 30 on the year. His only miss was from 47 yards. What a season. And again, the Patriots score first for a 23rd consecutive game. That is remarkable. Short boot. Fielded at the 19 by Cotri. Swings it all the way over to the left side. And finally, he's chopped at the 34 by Don Davis. So the Patriots put together a good drive. It leads to a field goal. Brady leads him down. We see the Dillon run. We see the Patriots pass and the field goal for the lead. Well, we remind you coming up the next tell halftime report with Greg and company, Dan Shannon and Boomer. All the latest scores and highlights and playoff scenarios coming up. Next tell halftime report. First down, a little flip to Martin. And he has a first down at the 47. Curtis Martin saying a lot of little dump passes in this first half. Yeah, and I, I would say this, Jim. If I was Chad Pennington, uh, I would look for those underneath receivers because Curtis Martin has been open almost every time they've thrown the football. They are concentrating on the outside guys and covering them. So show patience as a quarterback and do the old saying, take what they give you. Soul in motion. You end up as a receiver. Now they fake the toss. Pennington, he runs with it, and he is smacked and knocked down at the 49. Now Curtis Martin, you know, I still say, Phil, he doesn't get the acclaim of the all-time running backs, much less even his place really alongside today's other top backs. That's a bit of a mystery, too, when you look at what this man's accomplished. going to be 
right up there at four or five at the end of the season, depending on where Jerome Bettis ends up. Bettis again over 100 yards today. Those two are running parallel with each other in the career stats right now. Well, Jim, he's not going to get the credit because you got to do it in playoff games, and the personality's not there either. He's not doesn't say outrageous things, so people don't take notice. Pennington and the Jets call a timeout. Sign up. Santana Moss has been out this series for the Jets. Corbett with a flag down. Wayne Corbett moved before the snap, and before the snap, I should say. Illegal motion. Number 80 of the offense, moving towards the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped. That mm. penalty is declined, third down. Wayne Corbett in motion, top of your screen. Whoops. Then he just says, oh, I'm not even going to move. And then what happens is, keep going, because now the the play is, the, the pass is incomplete. The Patriots decline the penalty, so it puts you in a tough situation. Santana Moss is in on this snap. And Lamont Jordan. Seeing action. Third down and seven from the 49. Good protection and right in the hands of Soul. And it looked like enough of a running lane to pick up the first down, even though Bruski was uh, coming in on him. Yeah, it was. Gerald Soul coming out of the backfield. He is. Open going across the field. He is going to pick up the first down on a cold, windy day when scoring is going to be tough. You cannot miss opportunities like that. Toby Gowen had a punt-free day last Sunday against Seattle, but now out for the third time today. High snap. Fields it. Well done by Gowen. Boy Brown at the 15 and able just to step out. Country was honing in on him. 36-yard punt. 3-0 Patriots, six minutes to go, second quarter. Patriots from the 14. First down, Brady. All kinds of time now hit from behind. And Dylan wanted a hole. Here is a flag way back in the secondary. Brian Thomas hit Brady when he released it. But the flag is back deep. In the Holding. Air. 51 defense. At the five yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, that's the one that Corey Dillon was asking for. Jonathan Vilma, number 51. There's the hit on Tom Brady. Of course, anytime a receiver's not open, it's got to be for only one reason they're holding me. But you know, I was just thinking as I'm watching Tom Brady drop back, this is not the time, Jim, to be a quarterback. In this AFC East, the Jets, the Patriots, the Bills in Miami all have really good defenses. So, you know, you're going to have six games a year where it's going to be tough to get much done as a quarterback. It's Dillon running on the left side out to the 22 then stacked up by a whole host of Jet defenders. Give him three yards and Bonnie, let's bring you in. What's up? Well, Jim, just watching Tom Brady on the sideline between series, you get the feeling that he's kind of anxious and he told us towards the end of the week that the loss Monday night against Miami was his worst loss, his most disappointing loss of his 14 in his career. He said, you know, we had this game in hand with four minutes left. I threw two interceptions late. This is a Patriots team that's used to playing its best ball down the stretch and they really feel they need to get back on the right track. Well, it's Second down and seven. And Brady play action. It's his target. Fourier about two yards shy of the first. He did call that not only his most disappointing loss as a Patriot, but of his entire career, high school, college. Yeah, it was. Well, what did he say, Jim? He goes, you know, Tuesday was our day off, and I'm just in my house doing a few chores, trying to get your life together. And he goes, I thought about the Miami game, and, man, I, it just bummed me out. I go, hey, that, that, that's the way it is. When you're a quarterback and you play a game that you're not satisfied with, the only way you're going to get satisfaction is to come out the following game and get it done. Third down and two. He says everybody feels terrible and everyone takes responsibility. And if somebody jumped, it's going against the Patriots. All start. 61 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. 
Well, he said there is an investment by everybody in this team, in this season. And this is Sammy Morris going in for the Dolphins. And then things just went all Miami's way in the last five minutes. Coming back from 11 down, the fourth down pass play. Darius Thompson over Troy Brown for the winner. 29-28. Into the whole bunch of streaks that the Patriots had going. And hold on a minute. Timeout called by the Jets. 4.25 to go first half. Hey, Saturday, four young guns from the USA shoot it out with a quartet of international stars. The Tommy Bahama Challenge and CBS Sports very own David Faraday captains the international squad. Gary McCord heads up Team USA. Oh, boy. How about that? Tommy Two Bahama. fearless leaders. That's coming up next Saturday on CBS. Rallying the troops. My boys can lead, believe me. I look forward to seeing who. Yeah, lead them to where? <laughs> yeah, that's right. To the bar. <laughs> Let's have a cold one. Brady. Has the first down at the 34 to Dion Branch. Only the second completion of the game to a wide receiver well, for New England. Jim, what a job by Tom Brady. Just uh, Bonnie Bernstein talked about it. He's just feeling uneasy. Watch the blitz coming to Tom Brady, and he just falls on his back foot, stays there. Brian Thomas right in his face, and he makes a perfect throw right across the middle. So a new set of downs at the 33. It's Dylan. And able to find an open seam. Jason Ferguson and Brian Thomas plugging the hole. Give him one yard. Well, it's a big series for the Jet defense. They've given up two first downs now. You've got the Patriots backed up. It's cold. It's tough to move the football. Your defense is good. You're going to be kicking the football into the wind. It's almost a guaranteed at least a three-point try for the Jet offense if you can hold them, but you haven't so far. Second down, nine from the 34. Brady, excellent time, and he rifles it to Daniel Graham for another first down. Well, I think Tom Brady's got a good feel for those gloves right now because that you said it right. He rifled it across the middle. I thought Daniel Graham was going to be covered, but he has sneaky speed, and he just comes right across and beats Eric Barton and catches the pass. Look at the blocking up front. When's a good time to throw the football? First down, defense is thinking, run, you pass it, gives the quarterback good protection. Graham's first catch of the game is 30 seconds outside the two-minute warning and another stoppage of play. Timeout called by the Jets. They are out of timeout. From Edwards and the Jets looking for another defensive stand. What did you see with the timeout by the Jets? Well, you know what? It's, it's, it's a tough situation. Donnie Henderson, defensive coordinator. There's four defensive linemen. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And ten just ran on, and there goes somebody off. So the Jets were confused on what personnel grouping was going to be on the uh, defensive side. So they did the right thing, called a timeout. 2.31 to go in the half. Only a 28-yard field goal by Adam Vinatieri. First down, Brady. Pump fake now going down the field. And he has David Givens. Second long hookup of the day with David Givens, who filled in so capably as their lead receiver when Deion Branch missed eight games because of a knee injury. This one garners 35 yards. Well, David Givens just came into the games, uh, Jim, and just took advantage of a situation. He does have the speed down the field and also the protection for Tom Brady. The Jets splits two linebackers. They were both picked up, and look at the perfect throw by Tom Brady. Don't take your eyes off the football. Wait till you catch it. Givens, perfect job. Jed Weaver into the lineup. They have three tight ends in this formation. Running play, and Dylan backs it to the 15. As we now hit the two-minute warning. 3 nothing lead, New England, and the Patriots are looking for more. I'm Teddy Bruski of the New England Patriots, and from my family to yours, happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. 
Thank you, Teddy Bruschi, with a big interception already in this game. Teddy Bruschi thwarting the Jets' opening drive. A Patriot for life as he signed, re-signed again in the offseason. That was his goal. Doesn't want to mess around and be splitting his career with between two teams. Patriot for life is how he described it. Second down here for New England as Brady fires and has his man. Touchdown, Daniel Graham. 16-yard hookup for the game's first touchdown. The Patriots do this so often. Tremendous play fake by Tom Brady, and they send the inside receivers, it, whether it's a wide receiver, a running back, or that time Daniel Gray and the tight end straight up the field, and before the defense can recover, Tom Brady throws it in there for the touchdown. Sixth touchdown of the season for Graham. Who had a catch earlier in this drive to give them a first down out at the 50-yard line. 15 consecutive road games, by the way. Brady has thrown a touchdown pass. Vinatieri makes it 10-0. That drive for New England started all the way back at the 14. The last two times they've had the football, they've driven impressively down the field. First uh, field goal by Vinatieri, and this time the touchdown toss to Graham. Well, the fake by Tom Brady and the good job by the offensive lineman up front. Look at the space, the time, Daniel Graham, the play fake, all oh, the linebackers, they came up to stop the run, and Coleman, the safety, cannot get over there in time. Look at the linebackers, everybody chasing the football. Nope, he doesn't have it. Really excellent job by Tom Brady, good fake, and Daniel Graham is every year continues to get better and he's now he's he's a weapon for this new england uh, patriots offense well, don't forget they drafted a tight end in the first round back in the spring ben watson out of georgia who was injured early in the season with a knee put on ir we remind you coming up the next tell halftime report greg and dan shannon and bomer all the latest scores and highlights and it's coming up on the next tell halftime report well, so many things happened today. I didn't get a chance to listen to the guys during the halftime of some of the... How about Jacksonville? That's Houston. a killer. I mean, what a loss for the Jags at home. The Jackson... They, they know they're playing for everything. They're fired. But the NFL, the Patriots, look what they were playing for on Monday night. They still got beat by a 2-11 and team. So, what I'm trying to say is, you cannot predict these games. Well, with Jacksonville losing... Baltimore losing and Denver winning last night. The Broncos now move into pole position. They haven't clinched anything, but if they win next week, the Broncos again hold right now the right to control their own destiny for the playoffs. And they'll be next week hosting Indianapolis, talking about the Broncos who uh, put it all together last night and a win at Tennessee. So they, they were third in order with four teams in all coming into the week at eight and six, but the top two went down, Jacksonville and Baltimore today. Moving the Broncos into that spot. Hatchery to the 30. We have a minute 44 to go, and again, the Jets out of timeouts. Look at the AFC playoff picture. Earlier today, the Steelers with the win over the Ravens sealed the number one seed. And if the Patriots win this game today, they will lock up the two seed and the other first round bye. Buffalo, last time I saw, they're leading 10 to nothing against the San Francisco 49ers, and they would play a team next week, Pittsburgh, who, Jim, you know now, is going to rest just about all their key starters. San Diego with the loss, and that's a devastating loss in that they had a 15-point fourth quarter lead midway through the fourth quarter. They have locked up the number four seed. Pennington, right side, and that was intended for Moss at one hop to him. Incomplete. By the way, let's talk about one other thing. And as unlike, unlikely as it is, you can't, you know, talk about the Colts right now having the three locked up because if by some chance New England was to lose this one today, and then, of course, very unlikely, uh, like lose again next week at home to San Francisco, and the Colts won next week. Well, that would move Indianapolis. That's the scenario, the only scenario that could bump up Indianapolis to the two-seat in the first round bye. They would need a win next week, talking about Indy at Denver, and they would need loss-loss by the Patriots. Kind of surprising a little run, and Martin run out by.
by Harrison after four yards. As I watch this game and as I watch this Jets offense and you hear the crowd starting to like get a little uneasy because they they have a right to be. There have been some plays to be made by this Jets offense against this Patriots defense today, and they have not done it. And you heard Herm Edwards when we talked to him this week. He goes, hey, my big guys, meaning my stars, Curtis Martin, Chad Pennington, Santana Moss, they have to step up, and so far they have not done that. They say Martin stepped out back at the 32, so it is third and eight. And a sack by the Patriots. Mike Vrabel drops Pennington at the 25, and New England immediately calls a timeout. Mike Vrabel, he's like the, one of the quiet stars in the NFL. Just, if you don't talk about him enough, he makes a lot of plays in the passing game. He can rush the passer. He plays special teams. He's on the goal line offense, and he goes, look. There's some talent on our defense. It's not all about the system. The players can get it done, too, and he is right. Well, coming up later tonight, 60 minutes. His team's won two of the last three Super Bowls. That's right, Bill Belichick. Tonight on 60 Minutes. Interviewed by Leslie Stahl. That's coming up tonight after this game. You know, Mike Vrabel, remember earlier in the season we were talking with Rodney Harrison, and he told us about Mike Vrabel? Called him the smartest player on the defense, a real pro, like a coach in the classroom is what he said. You know, we hear all this stuff all the time. It's true about him. He is going to be a coach when it's done. That's what he says. He's going to be a good one, too. Troy Brown gets past the first wave, and Troy Brown has to finally get pushed out by the punter. He'll be going, bumps him out, but the Patriots are set up with a wonderful starting position at the 43 and with two timeouts. How about Brady on the last series, Phil? Well, Tom Brady was, well, he was perfect on the last series, uh, Jim. Tough throw across the middle. They blitz him. He can hang in there and, and still make the throws down the football field. You talked about it, the power of his arm and the long pass down the field. And the best one of all, the scoring pass. Tom Brady, you said it, the most disappointing, one of the most disappointing performances of his career. Monday night against the Miami Dolphins. Really very solid first half by Tom Brady. And perfect on that last series. Five for five, 82 yards and a touchdown to Graham. Running across is Deion Branch to the 38. You know, when you talk about Brady rebounding from a two-pick game, and it was a four-pick game, in fact, for him last week, but in his career. Not that it's happened very often, but when he's been intercepted twice, he's come back and he's won in every game, every follow-up game. He's 6-0. and The pass is near the first down. See if they give him the progress enough for the first. And we may have a measurement. Actually, a timeout called by New England. We'll have one left. Well, here you go. No, it's a game dead for throwing two interceptions. Read it at the top. The last look two years. Yep. Yeah, look what he's done, though. 230 yards a game, 10 touchdowns, two interceptions, 6-0. and That tells you about the talent of the New England Patriots football team. It tells you about his pride and his talent. And, and, and too, always be alert for quarterbacks who have those bad games and you know they just like we, we talked about earlier they can't wait to get back on the field on sunday to to rectify that situation and tom brady has done that so far today brady named to the afc pro bowl team earlier this week one of the three quarterbacks selected voted in the fans of course have a participation in that joining drew Brees and peyton manning a little bittersweet for uh, tom brady as the pro bowl falls on the same weekend as the uh, Pebble Beach AT&T Classic, where he, he's enjoyed his last two years. But he'll be in Honolulu. He'd like to be in Jacksonville the week before that. First down, he throws down the field to Branch. And Branch is down at the 10. They're so good at that. The inside vertical routes. Tom Brady throws it uh, tremendously. And the, and the wide receivers, they're so well-schooled, they know how to react to it. Branch going down the field at the last second. He turns. The defender never even turns around and sees the throw. Donnie Abraham never even knows the football is in the air. By the time he realizes it, 
Deion Branch has already caught it and gone to the ground. Well, the ball spotted at the 11-yard line with 23 seconds. Well, this is some uh, the Jets. This is a huge series for their defense. It played strong all the first half. They give up the long drive, and now... Brady, a fake, throws to the end zone, and in the area of Jed Weaver. Well, you're making the point here that a game that felt like it was a, oh. a field position kind of a game suddenly could be a three-score advantage going to the locker room. Look at the total yards by the Patriots this quarter. So many things, Jim. The, the scenario of the game, how you play it's going to change if you let the Patriots score a touchdown here. And also you've taken the emotion away from the Jets, the crowd, the noise. Listen to it. You're going in to score. Crowd noise is not even a factor. Two to the right, two to the left, Brady. Third down, and that one hits the crossbar. So remember, they lost the down on the spike play, so they'll have to bring out Benetieri. Brian Thomas, Dwayne Robertson, they saved the Jet defense. The front four, the pass rush, makes Tom Brady throw the football away. On the outside, Brian Thomas just coming from the outside, coming inside. What a move. 29-yard try. Already good from 28 earlier in this quarter. Another on the hold, and this one hooks home. Good. 13-0 New England. Things have gotten mighty quiet. Here at the Meadowlands. Tuesday on CBS, you think you've seen every episode of The Amazing Race? Well, get ready to be surprised, shocked, and amazed by candid moments you've never seen before. Don't miss The Amazing Race Special Edition. That's Tuesday at 9, 8 Central, here on America's Most Watched Network. Well, when the Jets go in at halftime, of course they're going to be disappointed. That goes without saying, being down 13 to nothing. But there's going to be a little talking going on between the Jet offensive players. And I'm sure the coach is going to have something to say, too. Because the defense, they've come out, they've played hard. The offense has got to make some plays and stay on the field and get some scoring opportunities. And, and Jim, we, we talk about it. The You saw the Miami Dolphins come back last week and move the ball against this uh, New England defense. The secondary is all beat up. So your chance, this is, this is your chance. You're playing against a team that... Wow, there's a weakness. It's in the secondary. Let's take advantage of it. And the Jets didn't even get close to doing that in the first half. And again, the Patriots with a win would lock up oh, that's the a, number two seed in the playoffs in a first round by the Jets need a win today to get into the playoffs. And then, you know, here I was thinking when we talk a lot before the game, ah, the Patriots, are, they're showing some crack in the armor. Yep. This and that, you know, oh, you know, you kind of, I'm yeah. like, hey, I'm a fan. I kind of jump off that bandwagon quick. They lost <laughs> Monday night. Yep, that's yeah. the talk. That's it. All right, if the football blew off the kicking tee twice, now you got to come in and hold it. I remember all those, you know, insignificant rules. The Jets don't want to have to wait to St. Louis next week to try to get into the postseason. Well, Eugene Wilson comes to the assist. Oh, this one hit a jet. It hit Glenn. Ball still loose. And look at this recovery. Is it Banna Kane with the recovery? It is. And the Patriots, with one second, have the football at the Jets' 33. This was just driven off of Jason Glenn. And Tully Banakane makes the recovery at the 33. Just trying to squib kick it, kick it on the ground. Jason Glenn cannot get out of the way, and it's kicked so hard. Fall on the football. Don't try to pick it up and run with it. That is a mistake. Reggie Tongue tried to pick it up, but not now, able to do so. Now look at Adam Vinatieri coming back out. As you would expect, a chance for a free three almost. I mean, can you imagine this gift? 50-yard try to close out the half. Vinatieri, he's got enough distance, but he's wide left. 
And the Boo Birds are out. The only thing, the only reason this ball, the wind, Adam Vinatieri did not gauge it properly, but he had plenty of distance, Jim, into it. All right, well, let's go down to Bonnie. Well, Jim, the Jets talked about opening this game up more with the pass. Has it been the weather and the wind or New England that's held Chad Pennington to 80 yards passing? Uh, they played good defense, but we've had some guys open. We missed some, some throws, and uh, we got to get back just to basic football. We got away from the run. Uh, you know, we, we got to mix them both run and pass. Coach, thank you. All right, Bonnie, the Jets have not scored now in the last four quarters against New England, going back to their first encounter where they were shut out at Foxborough the second half. It's 13-0 Patriots. Next Dell Halftime Report coming up. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Back here at the Meadowlands, Joe Pleco, honored at halftime, a special ceremony. Oh, look at number 11. Yeah, thanks. With a... Uh, little impromptu meeting with Mr. Klecko at one time, Brian Seip. And the sack exchange was here today as his number is retired. The first defensive player selected in the Pro Bowl at three different positions. And all the old Jet stars came out today. And there's the other members of the sack exchange. Joe Namath and Don Maynard reveal Joe Klecko's 73. Three, Joe. Joe, there's Don Maynard. Jet legends out the full force. What do you remember about uh, Joe Klecko in, in his career? Well, outstanding. You know, proud moment for him, so he should be proud. And he, he had a tremendous Jet career. We were playing him one time, and one of the offensive linemen was blocking him for me. He comes over to the sideline, and he tells me, you can't believe how strong <laughs> Joe Klecko is. That's not what I wanted to hear, but really an outstanding player, good person, and he's just so prominent in Jet history. All right, what can the Jets do to make all those old legends proud here in the second half? Well, hey, look, I, I, I'm not one to focus on one part of the uh, team, but the Jets offense, it has to start moving. There's got to be a sense of urgency. You heard Boomer Esiason talking about it at halftime. Chad Pennington's going to start with him because they're going to have to find some ways to throw the football and make it happen. All right, Phil, take a look at the numbers from the first half. And they are rather anemic when it comes to the Jets side. They had only nine yards in that second quarter. Turned it over twice. Pennington intercepted on the initial series of the game by Bruski, And then the fumble just seconds before the half on the kick. I think you heard Herman Edwards tell Bonnie Bernstein right before halftime, they've had some chances and they've not taken advantage of them. Some players have been open a few times down the field and either pressure on the quarterback or Chad Pennington not seeing it or not seeing it has prevented those plays from happening. We saw Kevin Casper for a moment. He uh, rejoined the roster for the Patriots this week. Backup receiver. Used to play for the Cardinals. One of the deep guys. And as the kick comes down, kick from going to Patrick Pass. And he's out to the 31. And for the fantasy fan, you know, if you have the Patriots defense, you've got to be pleased. But look at some of the offensive numbers. Brady, 180, and the touchdown pass to Graham. Pennington throwing for 80 yards. And the two big-time backs held in check. David Givens had a 29-yarder and a 35-yarder. But you know, there was a big catch on a third-down pass play on that touchdown drive by the Patriots to branch back at their own 23-yard line. On third down, had they not completed it, the Jets would have been looking at excellent starting position right before the half. And a running play with Dylan Nets only a yard, and we go back down to the sideline with Bonnie. Well, Jim, the Patriots came into this game with this philosophy. Curtis Martin will do what Curtis Martin does, but we want to hone in and put pressure on Chad Pennington. Bill Belichick telling me he's quite pleased with what the Patriots have done defensively in that regard. Pleased offensively that when Tom Brady's had some tough throws, he's been able to make it, but they know the Jets' defensive history in the second half. They've held seven teams, shut them out, including the Patriots in October, so they've got their work cut out for them. All right, Bonnie, second down and nine, and Brady steps up to get away from the pressure, looking for Branch down the field, and just an arm's length too far. The Jets were without Jason Ferguson on that last play. He limped off the sideline after the Dillon one-yard run on first down. Well, Bonnie Bernstein talked about 
Bill Belichick knows this Jets defense. It has been tough. Seven shutouts. Look at all the takeaways they've had in the second half. 14 points allowed in the second half in the last five games. Jim, you said the running backs have been shut out. That is true. Tom Brady, though, has answered it for the New England Patriots. Tom Brady and the wide receivers. The Jets have not. Timeout called by New England. They'll face third and nine after the break. Jim Nance with Phil Sims and Bonnie Bernstein, Lance Barrow, Mike Arnold, and the crew here at the Meadowlands, the Giants Stadium. And the Jets have their final home game of the year. Trying to mount a second half comeback here as we just a minute into the third quarter. Third down and nine for Brady from the gun. At all kinds of time. Pass complete and enough for the first down. Dion Branch. McGraw on the coverage. He picks up 10. Again, mentioned that earlier. He had that big catch. Keep the drive going at before the half. Watch Tom Brady. He looks at Dion Branch. He wants to throw it. No, he looks for somebody else. They're not open. Then he comes back to Dion Branch again. John McGraw, number 38 on the coverage, all over it. He thinks he has him covered, but he lets up just for a second. Dion Branch keeps running, and Tom Brady hangs in there with that excellent protection and gets a completion. Well, this one will lose yardage with Corey Dillon. Velma wraps him up quickly. A loss of three. And I'll tell you what, on that third down play, the protection was outstanding. And I think the Patriots would go, wait, we got Dion Branch against John McGraw, a safety. What a good matchup. McGraw does a good job, but he's let down that time by the pass rush by the New York Jets. Second down, 13. Robertson giving chase. Brady's pass short of the mark. Eric Barton also applying pressure. You know, I was, is I, I'm sorry, Jim, I was going to say, as I watched the game, remember when we were talking to Tom Brady the other day, and, and I, I said this earlier, when you have a running back like Corey Dillon, that is going to take some of the statistics, and, you know, for lack of a better word, some of the glory away from the quarterback. And I, I asked Tom Brady some of those questions. He understands it. He, that's part about the, what the New England Patriots uh, they're about as a football team, and he's handled that situation, I think, very well. Because you look around the league, quarterbacks are putting up some unbelievable numbers. Jets blitz on third and 13, and the pass just thrown away over the head of Pat McGraw with the safety blitz, and they'll bring out Josh Miller. Well, it's, it's the blitz by the Jets. Look at them coming from the outside. Good protection again. Gives Tom Brady enough time, but the coverage down the field is good. Nobody open. Justin McCarron's back at his own 23. Getting a good idea of the win here. The low driving kick. Oh, McCarron's left it behind and goes back to secure it. Took off without the pigskin. Jets defense. That is an amazing thing. Shutting out teams seven times this year in the second half. Now the offense must come through for New York. Let's see if the Jets offense can muster any success. Their first possession of the second half. They've had only one first down in the last 22 minutes of action. It's Martin. And he is walloped after diving ahead for three yards. Teddy Bruschi brought that run to a quick halt. And they had that one long series, six and a half minutes, their second possession of the day. Twelve plays. It still ended in a punt. Well, it was all early. First quarter. You talked about second quarter. They had nine total yards. Three, four, and then three. They picked up three on that first carry with Martin, and they ride him again. And this is only good for 
a couple this time, and the crowd is starting to get restless. Well, here's how you change it as an offense. Everybody talks about, well, you didn't have success in the first half. What do you do at halftime to change it around? Well, you change the thinking of your quarterback. Paul Hackett says, hey, Chad, do this and do this or do that. On a play that's different than what you did in the first half, you change the sequence of how you call plays. That's how you uh, change what your offense has done. And Looks like they wanted to concentrate on making sure, like Herm Edwards said, let's run the football. It did not work on the first two plays. It is third and five. You saw they have not scored in the last ten drives against New England, going back to a Pennington touchdown rush in Foxborough in October. They've got a first down with Kotchery. Rookie has it out to the 45, defended by Earthwind Moreland. That's an 18-yard gain and the longest reception of his rookie campaign for Jericho Cotchery. Well, Cotchery is on Roman Pfeiffer. He's a linebacker in zone coverage. Chad Pennington recognizes it right away, goes to the wide open receiver, and that gets the crowd going. And that first first down on a drive in the second half, that's the tough one to get. Room Edwards telling us he's tough and physical, that rookie receiver. Here they go back to the run. And a dive with Lamont Jordan for three yards. Watching Teddy Bruschi, number 54 inside. Oh, he gets a little, uh, gets caught at first. That just shows you, linebackers, they read the offensive linemen in front of them, and sometimes the offensive linemen do something just to fool them, and Teddy Bruschi went the wrong way, but recognized it in time to get in on, get in on the tackle. Second and seven, that was the first run of the game for Jordan. They fake to him, and Pennington steps back, fires it to Jordan. First down at the 45, Ted Johnson with the tackle. Jets will move the chains one more time. We've got a player down. It's a Patriot lineman. And it's Richard Seymour, the Pro Bowler. Shaken up. And we'll take a break here at Chetston. Well, look at Richard Seymour, number 93. Kevin Mawai trying to block, block Mike Vrabel. Goes over the top. Oh, oh boy. Left knee, but Richard Seymour did walk off the field. That was ugly, though. First down for the Jets. It's Lamont Jordan. Bouncing around for about three yards. You know, Jim, that's, that's another way to change it here in the second half. Put Lamont Jordan in there. He's change got some pace. energy, yep. change of pace, breaks tackles, got speed. Boy, you see a knee buckle like that go in sideways. And you start to think, uh, my goodness, I was surprised to see him walk off the field, but you know, there's a strong chance they wouldn't even need him again for another three weeks from now for the divisional week. If, in fact, hit that knee injury is uh, somewhat serious. Curtis Martin has returned to the lineup for the Jets, second down and seven. And he squirms ahead for, know, we'll give him four yards, maybe five. Third down and two. And on the rollout, Pennington fires on the run, and Moss was able to snag it, but well out of bounds. The idea was good. Santana Moss has run some plays like this already today, and he has been successful in running the defensive back off and being open. Oh, it's a little out and up, and then back. He is open. Chad Pennington off the mark with the throw. He has only three completions, talking about Pennington, to his wide receivers to this point. So Toby Gowen will look for the pooch punt. High in the air. Boy Brown. He fumbles it and recovers it at the 13. Well, they've driven from the 14. We're talking about the Patriots for a touchdown in the second quarter. This next series will start one yard back of that with a 13 nothing lead. Here are the numbers on the Patriots. 13 yard line, first down and 10, 13 nothing lead. Billy Dillon on the toss, out to the 19. 
gain of another six yards. He was over 100, talking about Dylan in that first matchup with the Jets. 115 yards, one of only two players on the season to rush for 100 against the Jets. McGay, he was the other in the second matchup between the Jets and the Bills. Well, when you watch him run, it just... I, I don't know another word to describe him just except he's just tough. That last run, he can hit a pile and fall forward, get that extra yard, uh, extra yard, and, and that's kind of what, it, it's everything about this Patriots team. That's just the way they are. And four, they get Branch on the run, going down the sideline, and finally dragged down by Eric Coleman. David Gibbons also throwing a block, and that picks up 19, so they escape from back inside the 15, and they're all the way out to the 38. Something that's kind of gotten away from this Patriots offense. When you run the football well, you stop throwing some of the short passes. They've gotten away from them uh, this this year with Corey Dillon. Nice block by David Givens down the field. That allows a short pass to turn into a long game. But, again, a couple screens today, something we haven't seen much of from the New England Patriots, and they work well. It is back to Dillon, who seems to be getting a little rhythm going on this series. Another six yards for Corey. Abraham and Vilma double up on him, but a good gain now to the 44. Yeah, you know, first of all, Jim, Jim, you remember three years ago when the Patriots won their first Super Bowl, they couldn't manhandle anybody, so they were throwing screens, doing a lot of short passes. It was really almost like a gimmick offense, and it's evolved. Now the offensive line's gotten better. Tom Brady's getting more experience. You've got a big, tough running back like Corey Dillon, and it's a whole different style right now. It's second down and four, and it's Dillon. He steps outside. What a smart move it was to pick up another first down. You talked about three years ago. Yes, I remember it, and I remember that Super Bowl team went through Pittsburgh to win the AFC Championship, and we could very well be on that same path for the Patriots this season as the Steelers locked up the one seed earlier today by virtue of its win over the Ravens. And, and I'm not predicting that that's what's going to happen because we see the lead, but if they do play in the AFC Championship, they will need that extra week off because it will be rough, physical, and you know, it's a, it, it would be an exciting game to watch. We're hearing Seymour with the knee is questionable whether we'll see him the remainder of this game. Goes down with back to is tripled up at the 43 after a gain of four yards. You get that first round by, though, you do get that extra week, and you look at the Patriots, they, and it's, it's just uh, not something you can control, but the league handed them their bye week on week three. So it's been a long stretch of, of action. The very first possible bye week was week three, and that's uh, when the Patriots bye landed. The biggest advantage you'll ever get in the National Football League is having a bye week while the team that you're going to play is playing and they got to come to your place. You are anxious, physically ready to go when they show up. Second down and six. And it's back over to Patrick Pass. The blockers in front of him. Inside the 30. And a big tackle by David Barrett. That might have gone the distance. Joe Andruzzi with a fine block down the field that helped gain 17. Yeah, there's got to be a rule, and it was always taught. I know what Charlie Weiss says. If you're an offensive lineman, watch Joe Andrews, number 63. I finally got him. When you go down the field, you know, that's it. Hit wow. the ground. Yeah, wow, it's right. What a block. He knocked down Eric Coleman, number 26, to safety. Because when you're a lineman, you're big. If you hit the ground, that defensive back is going to have to at least change his direction or jump over you. Then it's too late to make a tackle. Now the third quarter rapidly moving. We are at four minutes to go, and the Patriots driving. It's Dylan, three-yard gain. And we send it back to Greg in the studio with an update. Greg? Jim and Phil, the Buffalo Bills on a roll in San Francisco. Willis McGee, he was a game-time decision today. He's played pretty well. This is the second touchdown of the day. 99 yards rushing on the afternoon. The Bills are leading the 49ers 27-0 late in the third, guys. And what a turnaround. Thank you, Greg. On their way now to 9-6 and six on the season. Who would have believed it after 0-4? Second down and seven for New England. 13-0 lead. Pass just got away from Brady. Oh, I can hear the wind. It's tough. And you talk, look at Tom Brady's jersey. You can see the wind flapping it around. And such a key drive too, Jim. Look at the wind up top of this stadium. I threw a number. 
fact, way too many of these passes as a giant, but he cannot even control the quick flip outside. Going into the wind, they've eaten up some time. And remember, the wind's at the Jets' back, so it's taken away from the Jets' offense, too. It's third down and seven. Dylan, open hole, and first down. Just got it. Brandon Gorin helped clear the right side for his running back, and he gains eight. I tell you what, anytime you see an offense, if it's over five yards and they run it, it's got to catch the defense by surprise. It does this time for the New York Jets. This is something the Jets love to do. They love to run it on third in obvious passing situations. That time, New England crossed them up. They're going to measure just to be sure. We saw that update with McGahee going in for the Bills and up 27 nothing, And that is enough for the first down. One last footnote on the Bills as this uh, ever-evolving playoff picture really kind of takes shape here today. The Bills will need, with this win today, this apparent win today, they'll need to beat the Steelers next Sunday and then hope that the Colts can upend the Denver Broncos. That's the way that the Bills would would get into the playoffs. You know, I was talking to Donnie Henderson, a defensive coordinator. He says this game might come down. Who has the greatest will just to win it? And as I'm watching these drives by the Patriots, it's evident so far they have the will. Patrick Pass loses two yards. Barton and Hobson, a pair of linebackers for a loss and we've got a doubleheader next weekend on CBS Pittsburgh and Buffalo there it is in the early action many will see that others the Jets against St. Louis plus other action and the late game most of the nation will of the regular season doubleheader day on CBS next week second down and 12 Dylan is the tailback fake to Dylan and they come over to pass Eric Barton closes in, and again, he's dropped for a loss with an assist from Sean Ellis. Jason Ferguson is on the field. Now, he had missed some of the action a little earlier in this quarter. He hobbled off the field, but he's back in, and they're already running short with Abraham out of third straight game on that defensive front. See what Charlie Weiss sends in. On third down and 13. It's Branch. We need to make a move for the first. Who almost got there? Tried to squeeze past McGraw, but McGraw able to wrap him up after a gain of 10. You said it right, Tom Brady. Recognizes the defense, knows he has to go underneath to the short receiver. And Deion Branch with that speed almost splits the defense to get the first down. This will be 26 yards. Vinatieri, that miss right before the half from 50 yards, only his second miss of the entire season. It's 30 of 32. This one is good. 16-0. All their points have been scored at this end of the field. It's 16-0 Patriots third quarter. Hi, I'm Kevin Mawai of the New York Jets. On behalf of the Mawai family, we'd like to wish you and yours a very blessed holiday season. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And a thank you for the well-wishers from for the well-wishers Y family here come the Jets from the 20-yard line Country. Brable is giving chase and Moreland and Abdullah end it for him at the 30-yard line here's the NFL.com poll question can the Eagles well can they make it to the Super Bowl without Terrell Owens is that an emphatic absolute no, or is that a yes? You can vote. Well, 
I'll just I'll just say this. Between the, during the commercial, I was up here telling you, Tim, hey, it's so cold. This and that. My nose is running. And Bonnie Bernstein, who's down on the field, says, "What'd you say, Phil? What is what? What are you up there?" But Bonnie, I don't have all that warm clothing on. He's got two heaters, Bonnie, by his feet right here. Ty Warren. With the tackle, Rodney Harrison also helped out only a one-yard run. And this crowd, again, continues to respond to this uh, lack of productivity today by the Jets' offense. And that will probably close out the third quarter. Let's see. They may get one more snap. And down to nine, and they do. And they wish they hadn't. Jarvis Green with his fourth sack of the year. The third quarter has come to a close. 16-0 New England. And you're watching the NFL on CBS. Now, there have been a lot of heavy hearts around the league today when everyone awoke to the shocking news that Reggie White passed away this morning at his home in Charlotte, North Carolina at the age of 43. Well, Jim, I think uh, everybody knows that Reggie White was a tremendous player on the field. But uh, the, the great general manager of the New York Giants, George Young, George Young, who's passed away, I will never forget one time he said to me, the greatest gift you can have is to help other people who can't help themselves. And that explains Reggie White. That's what he was about. You can, even if it's caught, whatever you think about him, he was about helping other people. Let's play whistle to a stop in the flag. You saw it half staff here at Giant Stadium. They also had a moment of silence before the game with the players from the Jets and Patriots on the field. It's a tribute to Reggie White. We'll start the fourth quarter here with the Jets. Ball start. 69 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Going to need a really big play for them to keep this drive going. Well, let's let's look at the third quarter. They had the football for a total of five minutes. Talking about the Jets. Yeah, they had one drive and those two plays before the quarter ended. The Patriots just dominated the offense. They moved down the field. They ate at the clock and they got the win to their back. Now the Jets are going into it. Third and this long, you just try not to make a turnover. Punt it away and hope you get it back. Third and 24. Pass is picked. It is picked by Eugene Wilson. Cuts back at the 20, and he is down at the 15, the second interception of the game by the Patriots. You talk about managing football games. That's what Chad Pennington prides himself in, that he just knows situations and what to do, how to act, and when to take chances and when not to, and that was not a time to take a chance. The Patriots, they know you're going to throw. Look how deep the secondary is. They are waiting on it. Defenders all around the receivers. Nobody open. And Eugene Wilson comes up with the easy interception. Well, we mentioned earlier, Ruski had a pick last year here against Pennington and won today. And the same goes for Eugene Wilson, picking Pennington a year ago at Giant Stadium and once again today. So from the 15, it's Dylan. And he spins near another first down. Oh, it's tough. Situations like this, the Jets offense doing nothing. And you're on the defense. You've played so hard. That, you know, this Jets defense, they've come up with some big plays today to keep their football team uh, in, in sight or giving them a chance. But the offense just continues to put them out there on the field and... I, I just can't imagine what it's like for him. It's hard to summon up the courage and uh, to try to get it done. Well, second down and less than a yard. Dylan has the first. First and goal to go from the three. Corey Dillon has just set the Patriots' single-season rushing record, breaking Curtis Martin's record. And Jim Nance, back in 1966, with the third single best effort in a season. Well, that tells you a lot right there. Corey Dillon, what a pickup for the Patriots this past offseason. You win the Super Bowl, you try to make your team better, you go out there and you get Corey Dillon. What a, what a tremendous plus to this football team. 
Hochstein in the backfield. Vrabel lined up as a tight end, and they run it with Dillon. This one will back him up a couple. David Barrett ran right down the line of scrimmage with him, along with Brian Thomas for a three-yard and setback. Well, the Jets trying to hang in there, hold the, if they could hold the Patriots to a field goal in this situation, it's not completely over. It keeps it into to three-score territory. You let them score a touchdown here, though, it's going to get rough. Well, get rougher. Yep. That's the way it be an awful lot, no matter what they do. Even if they settle for a field goal, they ask the Jets to come back from 19 down, and they can't get anything going on the other side of the ball. Brady. Looking, looking, wide open, touchdown, Deion Branch. Second touchdown pass of the day for Brady. Branch with the seventh catch. And this one for a score is third of the season. Well, you talked about it. Boy, what a what a comeback game for Tom Brady today. Well, for really this whole New England Patriots team. You know, I, I, I got to laugh to think that some of the thoughts that go through your head as you watch them lose on Monday night, there's a reason why they've won two of the last three Super Bowls. They had a tremendous winning streak. This is a resilient, tough football team. 23 to nothing. What a performance by the Patriots and Brady. Well, the New England Patriots. Any questions? Coming off the Monday night setback at... Miami, 29-28. And, you know, we talked, as you mentioned earlier, to yeah. Bill Belichick here on game day. And, again, the schedule is not anything he can control. But you look at it when it comes out in the spring, and you see late in the season you got to play a Monday night divisional game on the road at Miami. you got the Christmas holiday to factor in and try to keep your team focused. Then you got to play another divisional road game just six days later. About as tough as it gets. Is uh, all the Belichick would say about it, but have they ever responded? Contrary return. Oh, boy, he walked. And the ball is uh, going to be in play at the 33-yard line. Let's go back to Greg in New York. Jim and Phil in San Francisco, things are going so well for the Buffalo Bills. Shane Matthews getting some playing time, and he gets in on the fun. 33 yards to Lee Evans, 34 to nothing Buffalo, as they hope someone ahead of them stumbles in the race to the playoffs, guys. All right, thank you. You know, Jim, just to elaborate on what you were saying, is that the Patriots, what was going on for them, everything was so tough, the Jets want to prove it. They're home. They played well last week. This is the week they're going to cross that hurdle and beat the Patriots. And then I think a lot of people thought that. And... Well, pass out to the 39-yard line. What did you see on the touchdown pass to Branch? Deion Branch sells it inside, then breaks back outside. Terrell Buckley cannot stay with him. Fast, he's quick. The play-action fake, all of it helped. And Tom Brady right on the money. Pennington over the top of the defender, Troy Brown. Right over 80 to another 80, Wayne Crevet. And a first down out at the 50. Well, that was a nice throw by Chad Pennington. Right over the top of Troy Brown. How about Troy Brown, what he's done this season playing in the secondary? He got beat on that fourth down play down at Miami, but he's come up with three interceptions. Uh, it's been it's it's almost remarkable, Jim. It just speaks a lot about what type of athlete he is. As Bill Belichick says, he's just a player. You you tell him to do something, he can get it done. And it's incomplete and over the head of Mike Vrabel in the area of Curtis Martin. Here's Troy Brown. And he's done it on offense. Caught a pass. Remember that? We were there in St. Louis from Vinatieri. We're going to knock it down plays, making picks. Troy Brown. Into five passes, three interceptions. 
and on the season also caught 16 on the other side. Second all time. Stanley Morgan. Go back to the same play that uh, didn't work out on the previous down, and Bruski chases out Curtis Martin. So third and 11 coming up. Now, you know, you watch this game, Jim. You see what the Jets' offense is doing, or what it hasn't done, I should say. Chad Payton, we didn't talk about it much. What went on with him and the press today? And, and when you get in any kind of battles with the press, which he did, and it's going to come up for any starting quarterback in the National Football League, sooner or later you're going to say something that's wrong, but and then you come out and have a performance like this, just sit back and you have no choice. You're going to take it like a man. Third down and 11. Isaiah, you are opening some doors that are going to get dirty. Ooh, he got hit and somehow gets the pass to Prevet, who makes the play, taking it away really from Troy Brown. Mike Vrabel knocked Pennington right at the release. Well, you always see receivers coming back for the football when it's down the field along the sidelines. That time, Wayne Corbett going to the outside, running from the inside, stopped and went over Troy Brown to make the catch. And that's over the head of Corbett. You talk about the uh, the fracas early in the week with Pennington and the local media, and really what started it was not so much what Chad said, it was what he didn't say. He just didn't want to talk. Coming off the win against Seattle and some of that a response to what had been said the week prior, in fact, that a loss at Pittsburgh. Yeah. People it's... were questioning if his arm was back 100%. He'd missed the three games with the rotator cuff injury, the shoulder injury. Did he have enough still on the football? And then, of course, he came out through the three touchdowns with Seattle and said, you know, I don't have anything else to say. But you, you and I have talked about it. it, it there's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. You, as an athlete, you cannot, you, you just can't win. You cannot fight the press. McCarrens lowers the shoulder for the first down. That was uh, what knocked back the Sante Samuel and picks up another jet first down. Yeah, nice job. Why, uh, to the outside, the Patriots playing it fairly safe. Look how far. Asante Samuel was off the wide receiver, very deep, just trying not to give up uh, the big pass play for the quick score. Well, the Jets have had it for seven plays on this series. So Ken Moss has been held without a catch so far. Pennington looks his way. He's not there, so he goes to Jordan. Tripped up by the ankles by Roman Pfeiffer. But another good game for New York. Well, good job. A lot of the passes that were there earlier and the Jets were missing, they are now hitting on this drive. Now Pennington inside the 20 at the red zone. He's never turned it over, never thrown a pick in his career in the red zone. And he has Moss. Moss's first catch. What an effort. Touchdown, New York Jets. Santana Moss puts the Jets on the board. And they will go for two. Earthwind Moreland on the outside, number 29, covering Santana Moss. Slips and falls as he comes up to make the tackle. Good job by Santana Moss being alert and fighting inside to get the extra yard for the touchdown. Well, at first we saw Pennington signaling for, let's go for two, but they're going to bring out Doug Bryan and go for one. Ball squirts out, but he was already over. Across the plane. This is the correct move. Don't go for two yet. I Do snap to the next score. Oh, Gowen did a good job of getting that one down. 23-7. Well, the Jets made it look easy that time. Coming up, the Subway Post Game Show, time permitting, with Greg and Dan, Shannon and Boomer, all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Subway Post Game Show. And again, that Buffalo uh, game is running right now. Buffalo blowout. They would also find a way to get in. We're talking about the Bills if they beat the Steelers next week, and the Jets went lost today, lost next week. That's so right. they, they could get in one of two ways. A, a loss, assuming that the Jets lose here, a loss by the Jets to St. Louis, or a loss by Denver to Indianapolis. You know, could you write it down for me? Plus their win no, against Pittsburgh. Does that make sense? No, I can't comprehend it. Why don't you write it for me? It's Casper at 14-yard line. Casper Trying to take off out to the 35 people are going to be saying, well, why didn't the Jets do that earlier today? 
That last drive that uh, worked for success the first time today. Let's go back down to Bonnie. Well, Jim, earlier today, Corey Dillon set the Patriots' single-season rushing record. And, you know, we always talk about what makes a great back. And Kevin Falk brought up a real interesting point pertaining specifically to Dillon. He says, I always tell the younger guys to watch. Watch how small Dillon gets when he gets ready to hit a hole. And then as soon as he shoots through it, he immediately opens up, squares up, and gets ready to contact. It's one of those small nuances of the game that we tend not to notice. But for a running back, it certainly makes makes a big difference. Yeah, very interesting stuff, Bonnie, talking about from Kevin Falk, how he can get small and come out of that hole big. Okay, this is what he's talking about right here. Now he dives underneath the pressure and down at the 39. So, Phil, why, you know, for the Jet fans, why weren't they able to do that earlier today, what we just saw? Well, you know, well, there were opportunities, Jim. They missed them. But remember, the, the agendas changed dramatically now for the New England Patriots. So they played, you know, they didn't drop back and play a prevent defense, but they played safe. Don't give up the fast score. That's all they didn't want to do. They did not do that. And the Jets, they're desperate. So now they're throwing every single down. And when you throw a lot, sometimes you get in the rhythm and you complete some passes that you did not get earlier. Second down, seven. And Dylan. Get those feet moving, dancing around out to the 30. Make that the 43. So third and three with the three receiver formation. Givens to the right. It's Deion Branch and Patton to the left. Down the field. Fourier holds it in for a first down. Well, I was going to, Jim, that was a big third down for the Patriots. When you pick up a first down, it's it's about two, two and a half minutes that are going to go off the clock. The Jets come with the blitz. They get Christian Fourier, who is a very good receiving tight end, against the rookie Jonathan Vilma, wide open down the field. Look at the protection. Tom Brady stands tall, puts the football right on the money. Picks up 23 yards. Down to the Jets, 34. You know, to go back, the Jets, they're 16 points down. They did the proper thing. They did not go for two. The rule of thumb is never go for two points unless you have to. So the Jets didn't need to right there. They held off, but they're not going to make a difference. Ray Dillon stays in bounds. Falls after a gain of eight. And we have seven minutes to go, and Dillon... At 79 yards, picking up uh, big numbers in the second half. You know, I, I was talking to some of the, when you, we talked to the Jet players, Herman Edwards, the one thing they said, you know, the Jets, I mean the Jets, the Patriots, they're really good front runners. They're free will and they're wide open. They're not conservative. They'll do anything when they're up. But when they get behind, then that's when they turn conservative, just trying to get the game down to the end to make that one play to win it. So they're on top. They're making the right call so far. Ooh, Corey Dillon popped by Jason Ferguson right after the handoff. For a loss of a yard. Third and three coming up. Let's listen to Jason Ferguson make this hit. A good one it was. Ferguson, the only starter on that defensive line who was not a first round draft choice. Look at Sean Ellis, a first rounder out of Tennessee, Wayne Robertson out of Kentucky, Abraham normally a starter out of South Carolina, Brian Thomas who's filling in out of UAB. But Ferguson in his eighth year makes the big play. Three down, third down and three. And he will come up short. By about a yard. What do you do here? Fourth and short. If you're the Patriots, you kick it. You kick it and go ahead and put it up. Three scores. Three scores again. That's right. It would be about 43 yards. Trying to train you to be a head coach. <laughs> Got to make these tough decisions on the sideline. Well, they're still staying on the field with the offensive unit. And a timeout called by the Jets with five and a half to play. 23-7 New England. Well, we're back, and the Patriots are going for it, so it appears. With fourth and one, and five and a half to play at the Jets' 25. Robbie Abdullah has come in. 
Lined up as a fullback. Could be trying to draw him off sides. Nope. They're going to go for it indeed. But Dylan. And Dylan. I don't know. Well, we talked about so. those tough coaching decisions. They were just trying to win the game right there. Don't kick a field goal, miss it, give him good field position. But the New York Jets front four does a good job and stops Corey Dillon on the fourth down try. They do. They give it back to the Jets, turn it over on downs. 5.26 remaining, and we remind you, coming up, the Subway Post Game Show, time permitting, with Greg and Dan and Shannon and Boomer, all the latest NFL scores and highlights. Jets take over at the 25. Drove it for a touchdown on their last series. And it's Moss making his second catch. It's a gain of 17. So Moss getting it going at last. First one for a touchdown. This one for a first down. Gets two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Justin McCarrens to the New England 40. What, what they're going to do by moving the football the way they are right now, it's going to change this New England defense. It's going to make it tighten up. Over to Quebec. And that picks up another five yards. Here's the lineup tonight on CBS. 60 minutes. Bill Belichick. And his sit-down interview from earlier this year with Leslie Stahl, then Cold Case. And Ocean's Eleven is the CBS Sunday movie tonight here on CBS. Again, this Patriot defense without Richard Seymour. And he got injured earlier in this half. Pulled off the field. Uh, apparent knee injury. One of the reasons why the Jets are moving. Lack of pressure on the quarterback. Javis Green trying to get to him. And Lamont Jordan is wrestled down by Teddy Bruschi. And you know what? Regardless of what happens here today, Jim, Jets come back. They don't. A little lesson here. And something to remember. When they've gone to this hurry-up offense, it does seem to free them up. Give some rhythm. Puts the other team a little, makes it a little defensive. Wow, Santana Moss unable to hold on to that one. Well, that's exactly what they were game-planning. This week was try to have this uh, air of urgency when they had the football, but we didn't see it come to life until the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know, and I didn't see it in the actions of uh, the quarterback. I didn't see it in the play calling. Uh, the Patriots did play, tried to take away the long passes early. The Jets didn't take advantage and, and make them really pay for it with the short passes. It's fourth down for the Jets. Fourth down and six. Make the move for the first down. Samuel will keep him shy of it. Let's see. Yep, by a yard. And it's New England football. One thing to remember here, Jim, is... Justin McCarrens make the catch. You could challenge the spot of the football, but it is an excellent spot. It is about a half a yard to a yard short of the first down. As he goes out of bounds. He's trying to reach for it, but Samuel just had him completely yes. handcuffed. And uh, there is no debate about that one. So 4.07 remaining. The Jets have two timeouts. But the Patriots... Just looking for a few first downs to put this one away and secure the first round bye and the second seed in the playoffs from the AFC. Dylan going to work. Banging ahead for another four yards. Again, the North won by the Steelers. Look at Jacksonville falling all the way back. To eight and seven with that shocking 21 nothing setback at home today to the Houston Texans who have a seven win season for the first time in their history. In fact, good chance for eight and eight hosting Cleveland next week. Baltimore also sliding back. This was a team a lot of people thought Baltimore would be a serious contender this year. It's Reggie Tongue of the Jets getting some medical attention. He ran into Corey Dillon. 
Number 25, Reggie Tung, gets hit right in the side of head in the head by Corey Dillon's helmet. Again, the AFC playoff scenario, all the division winners are are set. It's a perfect day for the Bills, really. They win and they get Baltimore, Jacksonville, and the Jets to lose. But what else do you notice there when you look at some of those teams? And we know that there's going to be a couple of good teams are going to be left on the sidelines come the postseason. Well, when it came down to the end, though, Jim, the big thing, the, the teams, Buffalo, you look at them, they're winning today. But Jacksonville, Baltimore, losing key games late. And again, the top four seeds are locked in once this game goes final. And it's again assuming the Patriots go on and hold on and win this game with 3.50 to go. Pittsburgh the one, New England the two, Indianapolis the three, San Diego the four. Corey Dillon coming over to offer a hand. A lot of things, you know, you watch the Patriots, a lot of pressure taken off their back today. You just, it's now they have a chance when they play next week, they have a chance to rest players, to get them healthy. They got the week off. The New York Jets going to be a lot of questions. Where do they stand against the good football teams? And Dylan banging around, still fighting for yardage. Yes, the Patriots next week will be at home and take on San Francisco. Well, the NFC, the Eagles, of course, are going to be the one for Arizona by 10 with 10 minutes to go. That division out west is not final. We got Seattle at 7-7. Seven and seven. St. Louis plays against uh, Philadelphia on tomorrow night. And the Saints, what a late rally by the Saints. Yeah, it really is. You know, but boy, here's what's amazing. I got to tell you, it's all the teams at 5-9 and nine, they're still in the playoff hunt. That's just incredible even to see a 5-9 and nine record even mention the word playoffs. As Jim Moore would say, playoffs? Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, the Jets took a timeout during all of that. And it's a third down situation for New England. Third and eight. does not want to go out of bounds. He's able to stay in play. He just fell down knowing exactly where to fall. Just inside the boundary. And that forces another Jets timeout. Again, it's a doubleheader day next week on CBS. Pittsburgh and the Bills early. Plus the Jets against St. Louis. Miami and Baltimore. Cleveland at Houston. Cincinnati travels to Philadelphia. Late Indianapolis at Denver. Look forward to being with you, Phil. Today at 12 noon Eastern time. You know, can, do, you, do you smell that? That's my feet. I think my the rubber of my shoes is burning. I got it so close to the heat. <laughs> that is what a question that is. Yeah, I know. I just, on live uh, yeah, television. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Did you smell? I was about to remind you we're on the air. It makes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Glad to clarify that for all of us. The fans are cold. They left early. That ball goes out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Vinatieri <laughs> from 28 yards. And then Daniel Graham from Brady. They traveled 86 yards on that possession. Remember that? Then nothing. Before the half, Vinatieri able to boot it through. 13-0 halftime lead. He adds another field goal. Does Vinatieri, third quarter, 16-zip. Brady's second touchdown pass of the day. It goes to Deion Branch. And then the Jets finally get on the board. Moss's first catch of the game, and it goes for six. Well, the Jets going to have to deal with some pressure this week. It's, it's, they're going to be 10-5 and five, unless they have a miracle finish here. But it's going to come down. Maybe we are. They're going to have to beat the St. Louis Rams in St. Louis. Look out. And flags are down. And the Patriots are going to appeal the flag because you're going to say the ball was deflected. Willie McGinnis hit the arm of Pennington right on the throw. 
And they pick up the flag. Let's see. Pass interference. 26 defense. That's a first down. Well, they're saying, wait a minute. How can that be pass interference if the ball was touched? Was it touched or did he just hit the arm of Pennington on the release? Well, just his arm was hit. Just his arm and no deflection. So that moves the ball out to the 29 with just inside of three minutes remaining. Pennington up high, McCarrens hauls it in. Great grab by Justin McCarrens. Right over Asante Samuel and Don Davis for 36. Boy, that was some throw and catch by Chad Pennington to Justin McCarrens. And that is just throw it down the field. And somebody, and as Herm Edwards say, said, somebody, the big guys, just make a play. And Justin McCarrens did it that time. They get to Pennington this time, and he fumbles. And the recovery, New England. Jarvis Green has the football, and that will put it away for the Patriots. Roosevelt, Colvin, Willie McGinnis came crashing in on Chad Pennington. They sack him. The ball squirts free, and New England has the recovery. Roosevelt, Colvin chasing from behind. Looks like he could have been part of the reason why Chad Pennington fumbled. Remember, he was a big free agent pickup from Chicago last year. Got hurt and has been part of come around and... and had some really good plays for the defense for the New England Patriots this year. I'll tell you this, Jarvis Green has looked pretty good all game long, too. He's had to sub here for Seymour for a large part of the second half, but he made some plays in the first half as well. Two sacks on the day. Jarvis now, Green, LSU. Yeah, third round pick. And a fourth round pick a couple of years ago. 2002. It's Robbie Abdullah getting the carry with a flag down. Abdullah rejoining the team this week. They re-signed Abdullah and Casper and rejoined the roster. They had been in uniform earlier this year. In fact, Abdullah scored a touchdown earlier this season, then was waived only to come back. Offside, 98 defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. You know where Bill Belichick goes right after this game, Phil. Where's Jim? Where he is goes that? right to 60 minutes. Coming up right after the game, Bill Belichick with Leslie Stahl. Think that's live? It might be. Except for those of you on the West Coast. It'll be coming up. I don't know. Gee, Bill, go anywhere as long as it's warm. First down and five. He's near the first down yardage. And that's Abdullah with the carry. And we have reached the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go for the Patriots lock up a first round by. Okay. We are back and Merry Christmas there. Thank you, Jim. Friend. And uh, Merry yeah, it looks like you already started. Hey, just what I needed. Yeah, just what Phil you did. Sims, the new book. Whoa, and look what you gave me. Oh my, Dick Emberg. Way to go, Dick. I know it's going to be uh, worked with Dick for three years, so I'm... Great I'm, man. The yeah. legend. And thank you for your book here, which is something that uh, I have to say, even Tom Brady said he actually went to a bookstore this year and... Did he really? Your, you heard him say that. Come on now. I, you know, I'm just... I'm being but I was really it. disappointed when you said you wouldn't sign it for him. I didn't know what that was all about. You know, <laughs> that wasn't that big of a request. But, all right. Uh, thank you, Phil. And uh, look, look at the... Patriots one more time and we, we we talk about this first round by how vital is it well the Patriots since the league went back to the you know giving those first round buys out in 1990 Patriots have earned a first round buy for a playoff three times 96 2001 2003 and that what they have in common all three of those previous years where they had a first round buy they advanced to the Super Bowl well, it is important. It says a lot. Like I told you, I think it's the greatest advantage you can have in the NFL. A week off, other teams play, you're anxious, rested, then they have to come to your field in a hostile environment and try to beat you. You look at what the Patriots have done today, it's impressive. You look at the New York Jets, a lot of questions still have to be answered about this football team. What we know about it, the defense 
even though they gave up uh, the 23 points today, I still thought they played well enough. They they showed signs of that they have a playoff caliber defense. The offense has to show here next week and in the playoffs if they get there that they can get it done. Quarterbacks hug. They all wish each other good luck for the rest of the season. So they sweep the Jets. They hold them to seven points in both games. The Patriots prevail. 23 to 7. New England wins it. Teddy Bruschi made a big play early. But it was dominating, let's face it. New England was the superior team, no question about it today. They are now 13-2 and two on the season for Phil Simms, Bonnie Bernstein, and the entire crew. Jim Nance, happy holidays from CBS.